Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Destiny Lalane, and today I'm going to show you 20 different ways that you can use chat GBT in your recruitment process. I'll include the exact prompts so that you can copy and paste them below uh, so that you can just add them into your workflow without having to recreate the wheel or whatever they say. <laughs> But first, if you're new to this software and you haven't had a chance to explore ChatGPT yet, make sure that you sign up by clicking the link below for free uh, on OpenAI's website as it's currently available for us to access for free. And I'm not sure when and uh, if that will change. So let's get started. So the first thing I want to do is we're going to go over into our account and we're going to create a Boolean string. So if you're not familiar with the concept, it is the concept of, you know, if and 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 or and not. If you're familiar with that, I believe it's a kind of logic, not really sure what it is on a deeper level. However, I use these operators uh, and or, like I said, uh, to generate these searches to help me find candidates on various websites. Uh, the really cool thing about ChatGPT is that I can just describe to them what I'm looking for and they'll actually just write a line of code for me. I mean, Boolean strings to me are lines of code, so that's what I mean there. So I'm just going to copy and paste a description here for a sales development representative I'm looking for, and here's what it's saying. Here is a Boolean string search you can use to find sales development representatives with B2B SaaS experience who have hit President's Club in New York, Chicago, or LA. I say that this is a hybrid role uh, that is actually, it's a remote role based in those hubs that would require local travel to their clients. So I also actually asked chat GPT, GPT uh, to go ahead and actually write an announcement for my LinkedIn profile so that I can share this role with my network. So let's see what it said uh, there. It says here, um, we are seeking a highly motivated, motivated and experienced sales development representative to join our team. The ideal candidate will have a strong background in B2B SaaS sales and have achieved President's Club status in one of the following cities, New York, Chicago, and LA. This is a work from home role that requires some travel to clients on site in these hubs. Now, I'm not going to continue reading the rest. However, this isn't horrible. This isn't perfect, uh, but I think that this is great. Uh, and let's go ahead and look at the Boolean search that it uh, spit out. And this looks great. I think that, yeah, SDR, because that is just letters, it didn't need the quote because it's a single word, uh, but this is accurate. You could go ahead, you can copy this into wherever you want and uh, start sifting through your candidates. So I like that because I personally have, you know, other tools that I use to organize my Boolean search strings, but this is nice that I can just sit here and just kind of write what I'm thinking and a pretty accurate and efficient, um, you know, string for me to get started has been created. And I think that's awesome. So the next use case I want to share with you is writing emails, explaining, uh, you know, the interview process to candidates. So especially in this remote world where we're working very async through Slack via email, if a hiring manager tells you the process, you still have to then turn around and write that out in a way that makes sense to the candidate, addressing the candidates, not addressing the team members or, you know, whatever it is. Uh, so right here, I am going to enter this prompt that I pre-wrote. It says, write an email to a candidate explaining <laughs> Some of this is not in perfect grammar, by the way, which is nice because uh, chat GPT does fix that. It says that the next part of the interview process will involve the candidate presenting their favorite campaign that they led to us. Uh, this should include, and it has like some information that should be included for the candidate's presentation. So what we're going to do is this is that email, you know, it's saying they, them, it's not saying you. So let's see what the results are. Dear candidate, thank you for your interest in role at company. We were impressed by your background and experience and would like to move forward with the next step in the interview process. As part of this process, we would like to present your favorite campaign that you led to us. We would like to hear about the social media channels you use, the total budget for the campaign, 
any influencers who were involved in a brief interview of how the campaign came to life. This will get better. This will give us a better understanding of your experience and skills in leading marketing campaigns and help us to evaluate your fit for the role. Please let us know if you have any questions or if there are anything else that we can do to assist you in preparing for this presentation. Um, so again, not perfect, but a really, really strong start, especially that middle section definitely translated or rewrote that email in a way that directed the candidate versus they, they, they. Now, this is a fun use case. So I'm just gonna write this prompt. It says, write this in bullet points. And I think this is doing a great job. You know, I could go ahead and instead, if I had a really long email and I felt like, you know, I just wanted to give them the, the short, I could just highlight this and say, provide information about, boom, and give them, you know, a shorter email. Maybe there's other information above here about who they're meeting with, whatever it is. I just don't want to overwhelm the candidate. Um, so I think that's a great use case. And also just writing announcements for social media about open roles. So here we're going to ask ChatGPT uh, to go ahead and write an announcement for me to share uh, with my Facebook group that I'm hiring a marketing manager, a recruiter, and two back-end software engineers. And just in case we lost count, we are on number four. And this says, hey, everyone, I want to let you know that we are currently hiring for several positions at our company. We are looking for talented individuals to join our team as a marketing manager, recruiter, and two back-end software engineers. If you or anyone you know might be interested in these roles, please don't hesitate to reach out to me or apply through our company's website. We are a dyna dynamic and growing company, and we believe that our team is our biggest asset. Thank you for considering, and don't hesitate to reach out with any questions. Um, great job. Number five. So <laughs> example number five is to discover uh, job title variations to guide your search. So when I say that, what I mean is list, for example, I'm going to ask ChatGPT to list 10 job title variations for customer support representatives to help guide me in my search. Let's see what it says. All right, not amazing. Let's see. How about marketing manager? Let's see if it just knows what to do. Here are 10 title variations for marketing manager. Again, not, um, you know, like not groundbreaking. However, if you're new or you're stuck in your search and you feel like you cannot find anyone and you're just kind of like your search is running stale, I think this is a great way to get yourself to go in a slightly different direction or adjacent direction and see what comes up from there. So um, the number six is generating new subject lines for your sourcing efforts. So you know, recruiting, we're doing a lot of writing, we're doing a lot of these manual tasks and just things of that nature. And it can be hard to always be in charge of refreshing everything. So I think that this piece of software um, or similar tools as well are great for, you know, just refreshing your job descriptions and whatever it is. So what are, uh, what are five interesting subject lines to attract a candidate to work at my company called Salmon Joy? Salmon Joy, I meant. I was thinking about Almond Joy. Uh, so Salmon Joy, obviously spelled incorrectly. Uh, this is a hybrid role based in Connecticut as an influencer marketing manager. And yeah, again, they're not perfect, but I think that's a solid start. You can also enter formats if you want it to spit out a format with your company's name and then create variations of that format. So again, just showing you the use cases and then you tweak these prompts to be a little more tailored to your search and your needs and you'll see the magic happen. So example number six would be personalizing outreach to never say hope you're well again. Let's see what happens when I ask chat GBT how to say hope you're well in, a, in sorry to someone in an email, but like alternatives. I hope this email finds you well, wishing you good health and happiness. I hope everything is going well for you. I hope all is well with you. Sending good vibes your way. Great. You know, just anything to not say, I hope you're well. We could probably cross off that first one about, I hope this email finds you well. Uh, detecting tone and writing. So this is a fun one. Um, you know, like sometimes I feel like, again, you know, we're spending a lot of time 
paying attention to detail. And then we have to, you know, be empathetic and then sound empathetic uh, and then sound empathetic, not just to yourself, but then to others. Right. And sometimes I find myself looking at emails and I'm like, how do I just reword this to sound a little more soft, a little like more neutral? So let's see, rewrite this email to sound more empathetic. You're not getting this job. Have a great week. Hey, candidate or dear candidate, I hope this email finds you well. I wanted to follow up with you regarding the position role at company. Uh, after careful consideration, we have decided to pursue other candidates for this position. I know that job searching can be tough and an emotional process, and I wanted to thank you for considering us and for taking the time to interview with us. I have no doubt that you will find a great opportunity that aligns with your skills and goals. Again, thank you for your interest in our company. I hope you have a great week, and I wish you all the best in your job search. Sincerely, your name. Honestly, like that is great. I literally said, you're not getting this job. Have a great week. Make this sound more empathetic. And it did that. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I know some people will be like, oh, scam, like how robotic. And, you know, I disagree, you know, as someone who cares a lot about what they do, cares a lot about the candidate experience. Um, I think that it, you know, it would be a little unfair for you to put that kind of you know, expectation on everyone around you. Like, you know, like something that's interesting to me with candidates is like, they'll, you know, they want to see enthusiasm, like your enthusiasm, enthusiasm for them to join the role. And it's like, I can only say we're excited to move you forward so much, you know, and I think that this could be a great way to expand on, you know, just my different thoughts or whatever it is um, so that I can sound more cheerleady and, you know, sell people on the role. Um, so, Example number nine would be learning more about the roles you're recruiting for. Um, so, you know, for example, let's ask ChatGPT what TypeScript is. Boom. It's a type superset of JavaScript that compiles uh, compiles to plain JavaScript. It was developed and maintained by Microsoft. TypeScript adds optional types to JavaScript, which can help catch errors before the code it's running. Okay. I'm not going to read all that because it's a lot for me to read, but um, I think it's doing a good job of explaining what TypeScript is. And I think that's great for both new and experienced recruiters. You know, we are always taking on new challenges, new roles, maybe new seniorities, and it can be great for understanding the nuance and the leveling or the adjacent roles to what you've experienced or recruited for in the past or the industry that you are recruiting for now. Um, so yeah, number 10 would be drafting interviewer training guides. So creating interview, interview training guides can be a time consuming task. You have to pay so much detail, um, you know, to things and you need to write it in a way that makes sense to the user. So in this example, I'm going to go ahead and grab <clears throat> some quick notes that I drafted and I'm asking chat GPT to write this in number format. So right now I have it as one, two, three, and I just kind of have a quick choppy way of describing how to do something. And this is going to teach my interviewers how to log into our applicant tracking software uh, and then go into their settings and change their interview availability so that when they are meeting with candidates, they are only being scheduled at times that make sense for them. So they're going ahead and then it's telling them the next step in the process. For some reason, I'm just telling them to go read uh, some job descriptions for roles that they'll see that they are assigned for. I can go ahead, I can copy this, I can put it in my training guide, I can put it in an email sequence, onboarding candidates, whatever it is. Number 11. I'm actually going to pause this real quick. I want to grab a sip of water. All right, number 11, explain complex ideas in simple terms. So similar to what I was just kind of suggesting, you know, for example, I start recruiting in new industries all the time. This is a great way to understand what exactly these industries do. So for example, I'm going to copy and paste this. I have my notes here just because this video is already long enough. You don't want to hear me going step by step through all my thoughts. So this is explaining to agroforestry in a quite simple way. Um, and I think that's great just because, you know, I need to spend so much time understanding the different roles and, you know, doing so many different things that, you know, doing super, super in-depth research at the top uh, doesn't make sense. So I can read what my, my um, 
client gives me so that I can understand what their company is. And then I can start to understand it here, break it down in a way that is not just, you know, under a way that I understand, but also the everyday candidate, because, you know, hear me out when you explain things in a way that makes sense to more people, a more diverse audience. Um, I find that to be inclusive. And then also, I just think that it makes you a better communicator. It's very odd to just interview people and just you know talk over them and pretend that everyone knows everything. Um, but the truth is, I'm oftentimes speaking to people that are subject matters, um, you know, subject matters in depth more than I am. However, that's actually not always the case. And maybe that is the case when you start and then that changes over time. So here, I'm also going to have another concept uh, described by chat GPT. So this is saying, what is the difference between on-premise and in the cloud? On-premise refers to software systems that are installed to run on a company's own physical servers or computers rather than being accessed over the internet. And this, go, this goes ahead to describe um, you know, what the cloud is. And again, I think this is a great way for recruiters to speed up the interview process, understand what they're doing better, provide a better candidate experience, um, you know, quickly advertise roles and different channels, uh, switch up their messaging, make sure that they're communicating in a clear way. And I think that, you know, AI really is the future of work. We have all been using AI in some matter of ways uh, for a while. I've been experimenting with several tools similar to this uh, for the last two years. And I'm really excited that the public is now getting either really excited or at least on the radar of this kind of technology. So let's go ahead. We do have uh, several other uh, samples left. I did leave my water, so I will be right back again. Number 12, providing hard to explain office instructions. Um, so if you've ever worked in an office, that might be hard to find. Um, it can be exhausting explaining to candidates over and over again where to find it. Um, I, you know, I've had to put little notes like this in calendar invites or in email notes. So let's go ahead. To get to the office at 123 Sun Drive Lane, you will need to turn right into the parking lot. Then drive straight until you pass the bridge. After you pass the bridge, turn right and follow the circle until you see our office. Our office is located at 123 Sun Drive Lane. And that is way more clear put together than the prompt that I sent their way. The example number 13 is drafting hiring events, uh, invites, and descriptions. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this prompt. It says to create an email template for me. Um, and this is for... Uh, myself, I am inviting, in this example, I'm inviting um, other colleges, what is it? I'm having a college career fair in this example. We're excited to invite you to our college career fair on March 3rd, 2023, 4 p.m. at Earth College. This event will bring together startups, small businesses, governments, organizations, uh, and nonprofits, providing a unique opportunity for you to connect with potential employers and explore various career paths. It continues to explain uh, you know, what you need to bring, mark your calendar and to get excited. So again, I think this is awesome because recruiting definitely requires a lot of work in so many capacities. Uh, so I just think that this is great to help us put our thoughts together in like a cohesive way. So example number 14 is expanding on company values. So in this example, I found these values on Asana's website, so I do just want to share that. Uh, I'm sure that you can enter your company value and just say expand, but this one we're going to test in real time. So I'm copying that list. And I'm actually going to write create a mission statement for my company named Asana who values the following. Let's see what happens. At Asana, we are committed to empowering individuals and teams to do great things fast. We believe in the power of clarity, co-creation, and taking responsibility for our actions. We cultivate mindfulness and reject false trade-offs in order to achieve our highest potential. We strive to foster a culture of heartitude. I'm not gonna read the rest, but I think they did a great job doing this. Um, let's move on. Number 15, generating hiring ads. So you can use AI to help generate new angles to advertise open positions. I'm going to go ahead and um, let's see, I'll type one up. Create 
a Facebook ad for an influencer marketing manager position in Los Angeles. Let's just see what it does. Attention Los Angeles professionals. Are you a skilled marketing manager with a passion for influencer marketing? We have an exciting opportunity for you to join our team as an influencer marketing manager. I'm not going to read the rest, but I think it's doing a great job coming up with some great text. I would go ahead and find a photo of my office or a video of my office. Uh, maybe I would take this and read it as a script, create a video, and then use it to get someone to work at my company, whatever it is. Um, and let's see. Number 16, updating job descriptions. So again, we're always writing, things get stale, things are being reused in the company and you just wanna switch it up, right? So in this example, I am taking some something from, again, Asana, so I do just wanna call that out. And I am asking for this prompt to be rewritten. And I do want it to mention that this will require quarterly travel to our headquarters. So let's see if it does that. Yep. So in this example, it did not rewrite the text completely. It just rewrote it. It literally did what I said. So it said rewrite this job description to mention. So I'm going to say reword the paragraph above. So that's also an interesting use case. You can say, hey, add this to the job description and it'll find the right spot. And then it's going ahead and it is rewording that job description. So again, a great way to just reduce the amount of manual work you are doing all day in your recruitment process. I know I'm here for you. I've been using this stuff for a few years and, and I've decided I have a few more uh, tips for you and I've decided below I will share this um, in a week week's time uh, to share with you, um, you know, a process that I've created using a few simple tools uh, to really, really just streamline that kickoff process and the hiring process to help you just figure out all the assets, all the things uh, that you need to reduce the back and forth, whether it's with your hiring partners uh, or with your candidates. I am going to take a few minutes to watch the sunset because it looks like a beautiful sunset's coming. Uh, and if not, I'll be right back. Regardless, uh, I'll see you in a sec. All right, everyone, number 17. So the 17th example I want to share with you is rewriting the text on your careers page. So in this next example, I did go to a different page on Asana's website. I took a different uh, mission statement that they called out in a different just general body of text. And again, I'm highlighting our culture. Um, so that's described below. So let me just mention that this needs to be re reworded. Reword this text for my company career website. My company name is Sana. And this is doing a great job allowing us to know that at Asana, we believe in the power of collaboration and are always seeking passionate, talented individuals to join our team. And it goes on to, um, you know, create another body of text that could go somewhere else on a careers page. Or we mentioned earlier that we're, you know, doing a career fair or whatever it is. Um, you know, another example, and I won't have an example to show you here, um, but would be rewriting, rewriting your company's pitch uh, in a candidate in candidate friendly language. So a lot of maybe more technical products or maybe a new company. You don't have the pitch down just yet, right? Um, maybe it is a, again, highly technical piece of work or there's just multiple angles and parts of the business. Whatever it is, you can just, you know, literally say, describe this to a fifth grader or describe this in simple terms and then just list out, you know, just kind of describe what you're looking for. Similar to how earlier I was like, create a Boolean search for me. And I literally was like, these are my thoughts. Um, so I really enjoy this. Um, I'm not concerned about, you know, AI and chat GPT at all. Um, I think that, you know, you have to put some thought, like, first of all, 
a human still needs to power it. And then a human still needs to do the work that it talks about afterwards. Um, and I think it's kind of fun to think about the prompts that you're putting in and how to communicate with this, because this is not a human. So again, it's just another skill uh, that will be beneficial for you in the workplace, whether or not you are a recruiter or a hiring manager or a founder. <laughs> so I have two more examples for you, and then I'm going to let you go and run and try these things and let me know what you come up with. Uh, so number 19 would be rewriting text with emojis. So I know that's kind of fun. Um, I'm sure some people go overboard with this. Someone that I know uh, in my network has been really, really excited using this for their uh, you know, segment of the industry, and they go hard on the emojis, and I know that they have to be using this uh, to generate it because there's just no way. <laughs> um, so this is doing a good job, and you know, you could take your same exact text and then you know, just reduce, reuse, repurpose, right? Uh, take the stuff that you already have and go and use it as collateral to go market these jobs and get the word out and create collateral for these uh, career fairs. So final point, and then I will let you go, um, would be to use this to create uh, an FAQ guide for candidates. I don't know about you, but there's just so much information that goes back and forth between yourself and candidates and hiring managers, and then you get the answer. And again, you want to respond in a way that is, um, you know, just not just a one word answer, right? So expand on this or put this in a few sentences. So as a recruiter, as a writer, as a previous marketer, I'm not afraid of AI, um, you know, intruding on my ability to make a living. Uh, I think that this is just the beginning. Again, I'm really enjoying uh, learning these different prompts. Uh, so please let me know if you have any questions. I'm happy to clarify anything that I've shared below. Uh, if you come into any trouble uh, getting the results that you're looking for, definitely comment below. I would be happy to try and explore that with you. Um, and then I'm curious, how has your experience been with ChatGBT and similar products? Uh, feel free to let me know below. And then finally, uh, if you are interested in becoming a recruiter or providing uh, recruiting training for your team, definitely reach out. Uh, there's information below in the description, all the links that I mentioned above, including the prompts that I use today so that you can go ahead and get started. So if you are still here, thank you so much for sticking with me and I will see you next time.